Let's have a quick brainstorm session. Any ideas? Buy a thousand orbits and suck up a lake. How about making a cube out of jelly? You can throw a crush into it and even get stuck on it. And you can eat it. You can eat it. That could be fun, but it's not surprising. Maybe we should get some helium? We won't have enough. We'll buy one or two tanks. <laughs> if you would think about it, helium is cheaper. We've already worked with helium, though. But helium, what if we just replace air somewhere in the world with helium? Honestly, that sounds really intriguing, but there's only one problem. You can't breathe helium. It's we deadly. Time, we'll die. The one used for underwater yeah, breathing. Yeah, the one for underwater breathing. Well, let's try to create a small room right now and fill it with helium, you know, just out of curiosity. I mean, at least just enough to stick our heads in. We can just gather helium from the bathroom as a small room and it will fit in there. Guys, I found a small helium canister. Whoa, it's leaking. Can garbage bags fly? I've seen them flying on the seats. Okay, what about that? Whoa! Whoa. It's open. Hey, look, the ceiling rises. You're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> can How you see it? Lex, can there? you see that? Whoa. <laughs> it's right here. So, you can just store it like this, huh? <laughs> All right, my voice, well, it's changing a bit. I mean, <laughs> essentially, like, you can uh, make balloons without even tying them. That's actually amazing. In essence, it's like creating rooms. Anyway, I suggest we take a room right now and fill it with helium. Let's go inflate the room. Not that one. I think yeah, this is the smallest the room. room. This is the smallest, the smallest room we have. And the smallest. <laughs> we'll get rid of the smell. <laughs> anyway, we probably only have enough helium for this room for now, unfortunately. So I suggest we conduct the test here. Sorry about that. These are experiments and we're not squeamish here. Are you serious? He's I actually believe you for a second. I'll go in now. Let's go with Look someone. Uh, and why am I here? Who's going to open it? I can do it. All right, so now I guess we hold our breath. Wait, if I can't breathe, I need to go down, right? That's right. Closer to the toilet. Let's count to three. One, One two, two, three. three. <gasps> the area here is really strong, really strong. Okay, let's inhale and change our voices. Hey! The voice changes a little bit. Guys, the air comes out really oh. hard from here. So the thing is, it does work. You can actually make a room, but the problem is it's not completely airtight, and as soon as you open it, all the helium just blows out, and that's it. It's all gone. We probably need to make a door in the floor like a hatch. It will be a hatch. Anyway, I suggest we think about it thoroughly now, but it's clear that Yegor needs to go get helium. We entrust you with this, as always, Yegor, ceremoniously. I think you know what to do with this. We need helium for all this money. I love going to the store and saying, give me something for a thousand bucks. So we handed other a thousand dollars for the tanks and now we'll go pick them up. Now, we need to build a special room to fill it with helium. When we inflate the balloon in this room, it will be a sealed room and the helium won't escape from here at all. So, our bag, which we will use to seal the room, is made of polyethylene. This is how our bag looks now, and it will be placed inside the room and filled with helium. Now insert it into the room. Right now, we're in our props room. Here are our doors, and by the way, we have two doors. One will have regular air, and the other, of course, will have helium. We need this to demonstratively show you how the properties of different objects will differ in these two different rooms. So come with me, I'll give you a room tour. 
So, the room. There's nothing here. Basically, this room is two by two meters, and there's some tape here. It's needed so that when we inflate our bag, the bag will stick to the walls. Why are we doing this inside a bag? Because there are many gaps here, and air can escape through them, but that's what we need. By inflating this balloon, it will increase in volume, thereby displacing regular air from this room. Let's move on to the experiment. Just so you understand, it's about as dangerous to breathe in there as it is underwater. So we decided to use scuba gear. This is no joke at all. It is a serious experiment in which if done incorrectly, you can simply die. So we're doing everything correctly. To avoid accidentally inhaling helium through our noses since the mask covers only the mouth. Well, we're these masks. It feels we're actually underwater. Perfect. The funny thing is that helium is approximately eight times less dense than air. Consequently, the sound conductivity is eight times worse. That's the first characteristic of this room. This can truly be called a scientific experiment. <laughs> it's just an indescribable sensation there. As soon as I entered, it immediately felt like my ears were blocked. Well, not exactly blocked, but it's such strange feeling like I'm in a different gas and I hear it completely differently. This can truly be called a scientific experiment. This can truly be called a scientific experiment. So being in this environment, your eardrums are also in a different atmosphere and they perceive sounds differently. Yeah. So sound travels differently. Mind blowing! It's not a dynamic experiment, but it's incredibly fascinating. Maybe the volume changes here? Let's start with this experiment. If the first thing we noticed is the sound, I suggest measuring the sound in both rooms from the same source. Right now, I'm in the air-filled room, and we're going to measure a sound signal. In silence, it's 30 decibels. 105 decibels. Now we'll try the helium-filled room. So, how much is it here? The same. Absolutely. This means it probably doesn't work on sound, but on our ears. How much difference did you feel in there? Well, I didn't feel it because I was wearing headphones. Try. Just try to go in and talk. From here, the sound doesn't change at all. Right now, Max will speak and everything will remain the same. Oh my god! This is something completely different. It sounds like I'm talking with helium. The funny thing is that all sounds are perceived differently in there. Any rustle, squeak, impact is completely different. It sounds like I'm speaking with helium, even though I have headphones on my head. Oh my god, this is something completely different. It sounds like I'm talking with helium. It's very strange. In short, it works the same way with sound as it does with the voice, absolutely the same. The funny thing is that sound is vibration. We produce vibrations and hear vibrations, but in there, the medium yeah. is completely different in density, yeah. so vibrations work completely different. The funny thing is, it won't be possible to convey this on camera because it's a technical tool and, uh, and, and it doesn't have the same sensitive eardrums. But now there's another cool thing. We don't know how it works, but we'll try to test it. This gel ball is completely filled with gel. In theory, if we throw it in there, the ball will rise to the level where the air is because gel balls rise in the air, but they don't rise in helium. It's the same as with an air-filled balloon. If we just take it and inflate it with air and release it in a normal environment, it'll simply fall to the ground. And now, in theory, the ball should hang at the level where helium is and rest on the air. And we will find out if there is oxygen there or not. Whoa. Look, it looks like a magic trick that's amazing. Oh, it went somewhere. Wait. We will release a bit of oxygenium there to show that the floor works. So there will be oxygenium below and helium above. We've shown you how a gel ball behaves in a gel environment where there's air above it. It hangs. I suggest leaving it there so we can constantly monitor the helium level as it slowly fades out. And we continue with the next experiments. Our first visual experiment will involve an improvised little boat. The idea is that we have helium here and at the bottom we have heavy oxygen. Let's go.
This experiment didn't work for us. We should have tried it anyways, because on the internet, there is absolutely no information at all. In general, regarding how objects will behave in a helium-filled room, there's just nothing out there. That's why we decided to conduct this experiment. Despite the fact that this experiment didn't succeed, I don't consider it foolish. It was worth trying, but it seems that the foil is too heavy, or we made the vessel incorrectly. So here we need to correctly match mass and volume. All right, let's move on to the next experiment. Interestingly, in our helium room, two GoPros have stopped working. They simply won't turn on here or there. Here they are. <laughs> they just don't work. We replaced the batteries, we replaced the memory cards, we changed everything, but it won't turn on. And the second one too. Here we turn them on, uh, two cameras, and they don't turn There's on. There's definitely something wrong with the technology in the Helium environment. How will the speaker work inside this room? In short, we're turning on music live on here right now, and we're going upstairs. Concentration is... My voice changed, right? It's here and concentration up there. Is it not working? No. <laughs> it seems it's... Not working! Let's move on to the next experiment. So, uh, humidifier. Right now we are in a room with a regular air. How will steam behave? Now, as you can see, the steam just rises upwards. Let's see what happens to it in the helium room. Maybe it fall or perhaps it will rise even faster. So, we turn on the air humidifier and the steam comes out. Now we rise it because there's more helium up there. Look, helium is settling here. It means it falls immediately. If we lower it, the steam is only maintained in one place. It's split into layers here. In the gap, there is no steam, as you can see. Steam falls in helium, whereas in air, it rises. It's logical. Not surprising, actually. The next experiment is also semi-scientific and interesting. The point is, inside a regular light bulb, there are inert gases which allow the light bulb to burn very brightly without burning out. But if you turn it on in here, it would burn out almost immediately. But in theory, helium is an inert gas, and perhaps the light bulb will burn in this environment. So, in regular room, we'll try to break a light bulb and turn it on. So, 3, 2, 1, the light bulb doesn't work. Now all I have left is to see how a broken light bulb will behave with the helium room. So, we'll break this light bulb now, hooray! Hooray, so turn it on! and it's just burned, emitting flames! It burns there for about two seconds. But why does it only last for two seconds? The problem is that we went up and down there several times. Because of this, some oxygen still got in there. And because of that, tungsten starts oxidizing and burns out. But due to the high concentration of helium, it can still hold for two seconds. Amazing! It's amazing! It's really, truly astonishing. I thought that if the gases are mixed up there, if we vacuum all the air like this and pump the helium in there, it should work. Let's go ahead and try. The moment of truth. Max, one, wait, two, three. Whoa! Whoa. 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 Whoa! Damn! What happened? Maybe the ball fell off and the helium heated up as it expanded yeah, and the yeah. pressure increased. And again, I'll repeat, guys, where else will you see something like this except on our channel? Subscribe, you must do it. So guys, now we're moving on to the next experiment with the drone. Normally, it flies in the air. It's designed for that, but the helium's density is significantly lower. From a logical standpoint, there might not be anything for it to grab onto and it might just not take off. But whether this is true or not, we'll find out now. But first, we'll launch it in our regular room. As you can see, the drone usually flies in a regular room with air. Now, let's go into the healing room and see how it behaves there. 
Well, let's check if we can get the drone to launch here. <laughs> this is cool. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's go. Is it flying? Mm -mm. It's stuck on the ground. It's, it's taking not off. taking oh, off. Man, I was 100% sure it would take off. Let's try having something hold it in their hand and launch it from there. The drone, as you can see, was pushed to the maximum, meaning the motor. Well, you can hear it. And under the same conditions, we launched it in the regular air room, and it flew, as you can see. It's truly astonishing. I'm in shock, honestly. In this video, we managed to do a bunch of incredible, unusual, strange things that are impossible in real life, but possible in a helium-filled room. A helium-filled room! And now we move on to the last experiment. The next thing we'll test is how the fire behaves in this room using this torch I have here. Whoa. <gasps> faster, 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 faster! Whoa. Whoa. does not burn in helium. Ta-da! That's what a room filled with helium looks like. Burning is impossible there. Let's see how matches behave. In theory, they shouldn't even spark. Oh, yep. No, no, no. Guys, we have artillery, windproof matches. Let's check them now. It feels like it should just small or not burn. These are never ending matches. There's Ooh. no flame. It's small, sir, but doesn't burn. Unbelievable. Oh, there, it's burning. Whoa. Here, sparklers. Whoa, 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 whoa that looked really strange. Did it just go out or what? No, no, well, let's try pointing it upward. In these things. What an incredible video. I mean, I don't know how many millions of likes should be under this video. This has never happened, not on YouTube, and there's no information about it on the internet. Can you believe that? I hope you enjoyed this, and you want to see more experiments like this. We definitely enjoyed it. It was awesome. All right, that's it. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Good luck to everyone, and goodbye! goodbye!